Good morning, everyone. I think uh, it's time that we kick off. I want to begin by thanking all of you for coming today to uh, listen to the presentation of our third quarter numbers as well as the nine month figures. The agenda for today is to go over the key business and financial highlights, um, touch briefly on a strategic update, then to review the key investments of the company, both in listed and uh, unlisted securities, and then close with um, a brief outlook for the remainder of the year. Turning then uh, to the first item on the agenda, the uh, financial and business highlights, um, I think what we've seen in the third quarter was uh, exceptional market turbulence, which obviously means that many of, our, of the investments we have have been challenged. We also concluded in the third quarter uh, acquisition of about 84% of uh, TM insurance uh, paid with issuing new capital and then fully consolidated coming into the fourth quarter. We took a conservative view of the unlisted portfolio of the company, which gave us a net positive impact of about 3 billion ISK. Uh, if you look at the liquidity and the funding of the company, it remains very strong, both from a, an absolute cash position and also looking ahead in terms of uh, maturity of liabilities and so forth, which we will cover later in the presentation. As we told you from on our capital markets day, we have also reorganized our company into three reporting units, uh, which will drive our business going forward. These are financial institutions, private equity, and capital markets. And you'll be hearing more and more about these individual units going forward, um, although they are not a, a part of what we report for the third quarter. Our holdings in both AMR and Commerce Bank have, in, have been increasing. And of course, we are engaged in a very public debate with the board of AMR in terms of uh, certain actions that we wish them to undertake in relation to their frequent flyer program. Um, we also made an approach to a company called the Inspired Gaming Group, and um, that deal is underway. We hope to have further that deal shortly, but it suffices to say that diligence is ongoing and the deal is very much alive. Finally, we've also continued the development of Gacy Green Energy. I think few of those in this room at least have uh, been able to survive for the last few weeks without constant bombardment of news of this particular company. Um, but I will give you further updates as the presentation continues. There are a few things that I want you to be aware of before we actually go in and begin to talk about the financial highlights themselves. First of all, the statements are, of course, prepared in accordance with the IFRS standard and reviewed by our auditors at KPMG. Secondly, and this is a very important point, is that we mark all of our assets to market. So any situations in asset values are instantly visible on our P&L. And the reason I highlight this is that this, of course, is different from many other companies that have already reported their financial results, who are also in the investment arena. So it's an important consideration when you begin to compare and contrast the figures between the different parties. Thirdly, um, our evaluation of our unlisted portfolio is conservative. We took note of the conditions in the capital markets when we were applying valuations to those investments. Um, the investments in question are four, Three of them delivered a positive impact, and one of them delivered a negative impact. The three that delivered a positive impact were Gacy Green Energy, Refresco, and House of Fraser. And the one that delivered a negative impact was Unity Investments, where we took the full negative impact of the underlying listed portfolio. <coughs> so we were conservative on, ups on the upside and took the full impact on the downside. Finally, it's important to note that uh, TM insurance is not part of our accounts for the third quarter. We only account for them as an investment 
because obviously we have not completed the transaction as of yet. Um, it is still outstanding and um, uh, therefore there are no operating companies consolidated into the group at the end of the third quarter. So I felt that this is important for you to consider as we go in and talk about the numbers. We begin then with the income statement, looking both at the nine months for 2007, comparing it with the nine months for 2006, as well as the third quarter specifically for 2007 versus 2006. Clearly, you see a market decrease in profitability, driven, as I said before, by the global market turmoil, and also by the fact that we do indeed mark all of our assets to market. Um, you will see interest income increasing, driven by a higher cash balance than we were operating under one year ago. And obviously, interest expenses are going up due to uh, a much larger balance sheet. On operating expenses, you see a, an increase on a year-to-year -year basis. I think it's very important for you to consider within those numbers, we have uh, very high one-time expenditures that are related to certain pension liabilities that we had to take through our P&L uh, for the first nine months of this year, as well as certain non-cash charges, which we also take through the P&L that were not included in last year's figures. So without those exceptional numbers, um, the operating expenses would be lower to the tune of about 1 billion ISK. On a quarterly basis, um, I felt that it was important to show you that FL Group, of course, is a company that is uh, marking all of its assets to market, which means that on a quarterly basis, there can be significant fluctuations in profitability. And if you look back at the history of the company for the last five quarters, you will see that uh, profitability has been both significantly positive, it has been negative. In fact, it has been all over the place. So on a quarter to quarter basis, it is very difficult to get an accurate picture of the true performance of the company. But nevertheless, we of course report on a quarterly basis and it's an important part of what we do. If you look at the balance sheet, beginning with the asset side, um, we have seen a 40, just under a 41% growth on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, the cash position, again, remains strong. Our listed securities have been increasing significantly, driven by investment in both Glyphnit, uh, the investment in TM, Commerce Bank, and AMR. Our holdings in unlisted securities have also been going up, and this is driven, of course, by new deals that we've been entering into, as well as the net revaluation of the portfolio that I mentioned before. And then finally, uh, loans in relation to investments are also going up, principally reflecting our investment in the Bayrock um, company, which, as you may recall, is the real estate development firm that we have a joint venture with in the US. If you look at the development of the equity, we started the year off with 142.6 billion ISK of uh, book value of equity. We paid out just under 15 billion in dividends, um, reduced our holdings of own shares, which also increased the equity, issued new capital in relation to the acquisition of GM, took a net write down for the P&L for the year to give us core equity at the, at the close of the end of September of about 149. 2 billion. In October then we completed the acquisition of TM or um, the issuance of capital in relation to that acquisition to the tune of about 8 billion which means that pro forma at the beginning of October the core equity of the company was 157 billion ISK. Liabilities again increasing correspondingly mostly just reflecting increased um, investment income, and of course the um, trade and all the payables are increasing from, from various operating assets. Um, it's important to note that the combination and maturity of the funding profile is um, quite healthy. When we look, for instance, at both the geographical split, the type of borrowings, as well as maturity, you see the following breakdown that about 60% of are 
from outside of Iceland, about 40% are from within the country. You'll see that the, the types of instrument that are being used are principally loans and bonds with uh, very little use of short-term instruments. Um, on the maturity level, uh, within the next year, 2008, we have about 40 that up. Um, uh, over the next two to three years, we have about 60% of the liabilities maturing. We think that this is a healthy profile for the company because, as you know, we have a significant uh, listed portfolio that allows us to then cover these maturing liabilities for the next 24 months without raising any new additional capital. The total cash position of the company has also been evolving throughout the year. It currently stands at about 56 billion ISK. Of course, a portion of that is restricted cash in relation to uh, contracts that we are supporting. Um, but it suffices to say that we are currently operating at a cash, total cash level, which is similar to the fourth quarter of 2006, as well as the second quarter of 2007.